Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer. Today we are doing a tutorial. Now the yarn that I used to make the original cowl is discontinued so you're not going to be able to find this yarn. Because uh, honestly when I was making this I was not planning on making a tutorial but then it turned out so beautiful. I was like I gotta make a tutorial. So this yarn is a Karen cake called a Karen swirl cake and I ran out of the yarn for that so then I switched to scarfy so this is what it looks like in scarfy you could use scarfy you can use any bulky weight yarn but you could totally make this in any yarn this pattern is I like to make my patterns completely and utterly versatile I like that I like to make them so that you can switch out yarns you can use any yarn that you want you can use any weight of yarn that you want obviously it's going to change the size of the pattern because a bulky yarn works up a lot bigger than a cotton um, like a two weight you know so I'm going to tell you there are gonna be lots of options for this cowl you can make it a summer cowl you can make it a winter cowl which is what this is um, for this one it is a Obviously, it's meant for winter. It is ultra bulky because this is a bulky yarn. This is a bulky yarn, even though this bulky yarn is thinner than this bulky yarn. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like with a thinner bulky yarn. You can make it in um, a worsted weight yarn, except it will be not quite as wide. It will probably be you know about that wide which is still a good width that's like taking what three four inches off you can make it in a lightweight yarn a DK it will be thinner um, lots of options you do not have to make this bulky this can be made in Florida this can be made in the North Pole like <laughs> anybody can make this in any size yarn this is a very simple pattern if you have already made my dish towel you kind of understand the chevron zigzaggy beautiful pattern that we are doing it's very simple it's very easy and then when we are done we make it a certain length and then I just whip stitched it together because the top of this should fit perfectly into the bottom of that and you just fold it and you whip stitch it make sure the stitches line up very easy. So this is what we're making today. The yarn that I am going to use for this because for me, you can absolutely make this out of a, a thinner weight yarn, but because of time constraints, because I am working with <laughs> a limited time, I want to get this up by this week. I am going to do it again with a bulky yarn, but this time I picked some of my favorite bulky yarn. This is Premier Yarn. This is acrylic. Like I said, this is this has wool content. Both of these yarns have wool content. If you can't use wool, no big deal. You can get puzzle yarn fully 100% acrylic you can get any of your favorite yarn you can make this out of worsted yarn you it doesn't matter it does not matter just find a hook that works kind of with this and I'm also going to tell you this um for this bulky weight yarn this suggests a six millimeter hook which is what I'm going to use but if you want it to be see how this is a little bit more um like a thick dense fabric if you want it to be a little lighter maybe drapier like this use a bigger hook you can use a seven millimeter hook no problem no problem you probably use an eight millimeter hook it'll just be like a little more gapy and that's that's a beautiful look you can do the same thing with like a DK or a worsted weight you can use a six millimeter hook on like a DK weight and it will just be more like open and lacy looking it does not matter use your best judgment use your favorite hook get your favorite yarn your favorite yarn content if you live in a hot humid environment use cotton if you need to does not matter all right so like I said I'm using puzzle premier puzzle um, this is hundred percent acrylic it says it's a bulky number five but it's kind of thinner it's not as thick as the Karen cake it's a little bit thinner this is 328 yards so I'm gonna need two of these for this and this is in the colorway hidden picture this is what I'm using again use whatever you want whatever colors you want this is just what I had very close to me and that's what we're gonna do all right let's go down to the table 
All right, everybody, let's get started. Now, like I said, I have the Premier Puzzle Yarn. This is what we are working with today. Um, bulky number five. I decided to use an L hook or a um, seven millimeter hook. So that's what I decided to use today because I started off this tutorial. This is the second time I'm filming it. I started it off with the uh, six millimeter hook and it was just coming out too dense. And so I decided to, you know, restart and use a seven millimeter hook. Let me try to get my uh, camera into just the right position. We're going to start with a slip knot. And I like to show how I do a slip knot because sometimes people come across these tutorials and they don't know how to crochet. So I want to make this as beginner friendly as possible. So I take when I'm making a slip knot as I grab the tip of my yarn, I put it underneath. This should look like an awareness ribbon, you know, so like that. And that you want the shorter end on the bottom underneath the loop. Okay. And then we pinch it at where it crosses. We go in from top to bottom, grab yarn, pull up a loop and tighten it. Okay, you want it tight against here, but not so tight that it doesn't slide. And this pattern is, like I said, multifunctional. I I want this to be just versatile. I want you to be able to make as many chevrons as you want. So for me, let me give you a little, this is what my pattern looks like. It's zigzag, zigzag. I have, come on, focus. I have three chevrons. And at the top of every peak, there's going to be an increase. And at the bottom of every valley is going to be a decrease. And along each side of the hill is going to be four stitches. So in order to do that, we are going to have a multiple of 14. If you want more than three zigzags or peaks, then just add 14. If you only want two zigzags, subtract 14. So we're going to start with a multiple of 14 is 42. We're going to add one as a turning chain. So we're going to start this for three zigzags with 43 stitches. Okay. Pull my camera up a little higher so we're not like right up against the yarn. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, two, three, two, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Forty-three is what I got. We are going to start every row and end every row exactly the same. This is a one row repeat. This could not be a simpler pattern. So we are going to take, we are going to make a two double crochet together in the first two stitches. So see, here's our chain. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go into this, not this loop right here, touching the chain, but the next one over. We are going to do half of a double crochet. So yarn over, go into this stitch, pull up a loop and pull off two of the loops that are on your hook. So now you should have two hooks that are two hoops, two loops there. You're going to yarn over and go into the next hole and you're going to pull up a loop, pull off two. Now you have three and you're going to pull off all three. We're going to start and end every row with a decrease. Just like that, two double crochets together. And then we're going to put four double crochets in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. And if you have a hard time seeing this yarn or the stitches in this video, go watch my, um, my kitchen towel video because it's the same pattern. It's very easy. And the, the yarn is not so busy body. The reason I picked this yarn is because it has kind of a striping effect, which will enhance the, the chevron pattern. All right, so we got our two decreases or our decrease in the, those two stitches. We have four double crochets, and then we're going to put two double crochets in the next two stitches. So two in this stitch. This is an increase. And then two in the next stitch. Well, two double crochets each in the next two stitches. So that equals four. Well, there's two in that stitch and two in that stitch. 
Now we're going to go back down the side of the mountain and we're going to put four double crochets in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And now it's time to decrease. So we're going to go decrease, increase, decrease, increase. So four, four in between. And to decrease, we're going to do the same thing we did at the beginning of the row, but we're going to do that twice. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next, pull up a loop, take off two, yarn over, go into the next, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off all three. And we're going to do that again. That's a two, do two double crochet together. Yarn over, go into the next loop, pull up a loop, pull off two, yarn over, go into the next Pull up, pull off two, pull off three. Those are our two decreases together. And I know this yarn is hard to see, but if you are struggling with this, I promise, go to that kitchen tutorial. It's the same thing. So over the next four stitches, we're going to put a double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And now because we did decrease last time, now we're going to do an increase. This is the top of our peak. We're going to put two double crochet in the next two stitches. So two in that stitch and two in this stitch. That's four stitches total. Sometimes when I'm talking towards a tutor in a tutorial, I'm like, did that make sense? Did that make sense even to me? <laughs> so we're gonna do four double crochet across the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And now it's time for a decrease. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to do our two double crochets together. And then two double crochets together in the next two stitches. Okay, then we're going to do, we're going to do four double crochets. One, two, three. Four, climbing back up the hill. Now we're going to do our increase. Two double crochets in this stitch. That's our increase. Two double crochets in the next stitch. That's our increase. And then we're going to do, go back down the hill. Four double crochets across the next four stitches. One in each stitch. Two three and four. Now we got two stitches left here. So what we're going to do is a decrease because we started a decrease. We're going to end with a decrease. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, pull off two, yarn over, go into that very last stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off all three. We're going to chain one. And now we're going to turn our work. And don't worry, this will lay flatter and be more chevron-esque as we put more stitches in. But this is what your first row should look like. So you should have a decrease, so two double crochet together, four double crochets going up the hill, two double crochets in one stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch, four going down the hill, then the two double crochets together, two double crochets together, four going up, two and two, Four going down, two and two, like that. Very easy. You guys got this. We're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. You chain one, we turned. Now we are going to, see this is our, this is our double crochet together. And then the next double crochet. So we are going to do a double, two double crochet together in those two stitches. The same way we just did. Decrease at the beginning of the row. In the next four stitches, we're going to do a double crochet in each one of those. One, two, three, four. Now we're at the top of our peaks. See, here's our, if you pull your stitches apart, hopefully you guys can see that. This is our two double crochets. This is our first increase. And this over here is our second increase. So the two, see we have a V here and a V here. 
So what we want to do is these stitches at the very top of the peak, we're going to increase in those stitches. Okay. So you'll see your V's coming up and you're just going to increase in these two stitches. So we're going to put two double crochet here, two double crochet here. And as long as you count as you're going, it's okay. And, and this pattern, I very often will miscount and I just fudge it and I keep going. As long as you try to keep your peaks where your peaks are and your valleys where your valleys are, it's okay if you have a little miscounting every once in a while. You just try to fudge it, you know? So we put our two increases. Now we should have four stitches going down the hill. One. Two. Three. And four. And now it's time to decrease. So... Here are our decrease stitches here, and then on either side there's a double crochet. So we're going to do our two double crochet together by yarning over, pull up a loop, pull off two, yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, and then pull off all three. That's your first decrease, and do it again. Yarn over, go in that next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off three. There's our decrease. Now we're going to go four double crochets back up the hill. One, two, three, and four. And then at the top of the hill, untangle my yarn. We're back to the, see the V stitches here. So the center, remember we're gonna de we're gonna increase so two double crochets in that stitch, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And then we're gonna do four double crochets going down the hill. One, two, three, and four. And now we're time to do a decrease because we're in the valley. And then decrease again. Got two decreases because we're in the valley. And then we're going to go four up the hill. I apologize for Lucas. He is home for the week because he has the dreaded virus. But as you can hear, he's acting just fine. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We're at the peak, so we're going to put an increase in those two stitches. Two double crochets in each of those two stitches. And then we're going to go four back down the hill. One, two, three, and four. I was not expecting there to be solid white in this colorway. That kind of threw me off a little bit. I've never used this colorway of puzzle. I've used a lot of the other ones, but I've not used this one. So we're ending the row in a decrease. So two double crochet together in those last two stitches. This is what we have so far. We're just going to continue this until it reaches a length that it comfortably will go around and close around your neck and it sits where you want it. You can make this as short or as long as you want. I am going to probably use up two skeins of yarn for this because I like it to hang just at my bosom area. Um, like I said, you can make it closer or tighter, but I'm going to show you one more row and then I'm going to let you guys go about your business and work on this. And then we will come back when I get to the length that I want and we will close it off. Um, the, I will measure, I will, let, let me measure this one real quick. And so we can get an idea of how long we want this. Okay, so this board that it is on, this foam board that it is on is 24 inches. So I think that the length of this is going to be about 40 inches to where it'll close off. And we can sew it closed. But measure it on your neck before you get to the point where we go move on and we seam it up. Just just make sure it fits good. If you need to put stitch markers to hold it together, 
and then wear it on your neck before we seam it up, do that. Because you don't want to seam it up and then have to take it apart because it just is too tight or like whatever. So at around 40 inches, I'm going to measure it on myself and I will come back and show you how to close this up. But I'm going to show you one more row to make sure that we all are on the same page. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And then over the next, the first two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to do two double crochets together. But I showed you how to do that, so we got it. And then we're going to do four double crochets across the next four stitches. And I have a yarn tangle coming up. <laughs> so I might have, yep, yeah, yarn tangle. Um, I have to pull that apart a little bit so I can, so I can crochet. All right. So we have the two together, four going up the hill. We're at the V stitch, the top. We're gonna to put an increase. Then we're gonna put another increase, which is two double crochets, to, not together, two double crochets in the same stitch. And then we're gonna go four down the hill. One, two, three, four, and we're going to do two decreases. So we're going to two together here, two together here. Funny story. Little man was talking to Amazon so much through his little speaker thingy. We were in the car the other day. He called me Amazon or he called me Alexa and asked me to volume up. I was like, bro, I ain't Alexa. <laughs> I am not Alexa. That ain't how that works. So we're going four double crochets up the hill. Because I know you can hear him talking. Echo, echo. He, his voice carries. When I was a little girl, and at the top, so I'm doing the increases. When I was a little girl, my mom used to tell me, are you having a hard time hearing? Because I talked really, really loud. She would always ask me, are you having a hard time hearing? Why are you so loud? I'm right next to you. And now I totally understand what she was talking about. Because little man is loud all the time. And I think it's because he's trying to talk loud enough so that he doesn't lose his train of thought. Which, now looking back, maybe that's what I was doing. It's so funny when you have a kid and you learn about yourself through watching them. There's been so many times where I wish I could go back and just apologize to my mother for being a brat when I was a little kid. <laughs> I swear. I swear. So we're going back up the hill. We're going four. Three. And four. We're at the top of the hill, so we're increasing those two stitches. So you guys got this. I feel like I don't need to explain it. You got it. Four down the hill. And if you guys get confused, you can rewatch this, replay it as many times as you need to. And if you're having a hard time seeing what I'm doing, absolutely go watch the kitchen towel video. I will. Make sure that I link it below. The last two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. And the reason we decrease on the outsides here is because if we did not, because we're adding stitches here, this would start to veer outward and it would grow. So you want to decrease at the start and the end of every row. Just do your chain one and your, well, when you start the row, chain one, do the two double crochets together, four going up the hill. Put your increases, four going down the hill, put your decreases. My hands are going to be charts. This is going to be an increase, that's going to be a decrease. And then just keep going until it is the length that fits around you. And I will be back at around 40 inches, give or take. And uh, I'll show you how to seam this up. This is a super easy, super quick tutorial. And the bulkier yarn you use, the faster this works up. I have some yarn from Premier that is called So Wooly. And if you can use wool, I highly suggest it. It's like a bulky six. It would work up so super fast, but you would need a lot because the balls are... I'm looking at one across the room. 
I think it's only like maybe a hundred yards so you would need like quite a few of them to make one of these but that's why we used puzzle because um puzzle is 328 yards and I think two of those will suffice um because that's what I used with the yellow one the the cake the Karen cake was 300 something yards and then I used half of like a scarfy so I think two premier puzzles would work and puzzle is available at um walmart it's available on premieryarns.com which i have an affiliate link to if you want to buy it through there um, but it is on walmart it is at walmart and i have seen it at other stores too but like it's hit or miss whether your michaels is going to have it or your joanne's or whatever but this is available in stores if you want to go look at the colors and touch it um all right i will be back it is the following day and we have completed our mission all right, guys, so this is the original that I made. This is the one that's already sealed up. But I wanted to do a quick measurement and just double check to make sure that, oh, dang it. There we go. Yeah, it is about 22 and a half inches on this side, so double that. It's about 44 inches to get it as big as I do to where it sits down kind of on your 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 bosom like I showed um this one is significantly shorter because I'm making this for baby paprika I'm gonna send this to her so I decided to stop after the first row not the first row I stopped after the first skein so this is one entire skein of the puzzle yarn one entire skein we're going to measure this. I I already put this on my neck and I measured it and it fits much closer to the neck like a cowl, but she lives in a colder climate and, and I just think it would be beneficial for her to have a closer neck and she's not as large as I am. So this one is at 19 and a half inches. So we're going to just say 20 times, it's about um, 38 inches around. We'll say it's about 38 inches around, 39 inches around, and that works perfectly for her. So if you want to make this with just one hank or one skein of the puzzle, you absolutely could do that. And it, will, it, it fits around my neck. If it's comfortably around my neck, it's not tight around my neck. So this would work with one skein. And can we talk about these colors? Oh man, I just love, love the way this turned out. I like the puzzle yarn because of the, the way the colors like shift and like blend into each other. I just, I really am enjoying working with the puzzle. Okay, so now that we got, I folded it in half, we got it to the point where we can start to sew it up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to seam it together. I left, this is like I said, this is an entire skein. I left a bunch left, which there's a knot in the end to make sure I had enough to sew it in. So this is about, let me see how much my tail is. Let's see how long my tail is. It is about 40 inches. My tail is about 40 inches. I don't know that we need it to be 40 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in. I did my last row exactly like I did all the other rows. I have a safety pin in my mouth. And I'm just going to take this long tail, bring you guys in so you can see what we're doing here. I'm just going to pull it, bind it off. Oof, I just had to pause to sneeze. That was a powerful sneeze. Now what we're gonna do is I am going to take some of these plastic, oop, I threw it, I threw it. <laughs> I'm going to take some of these plastic safety pins and I am going to make sure that we line up. See, th this is the starting row. This is the final row. I'm going to make sure that our zigzags line up. And what I'm going to do is at the very start and end of these rows right here, I'm going to safety pin the first stitch to the first stitch. And this is a way you can measure it to make sure that it is long enough on your neck is to put these pins in and then put it around your neck and make sure that it is 
uh, and keep in mind, this is going to pull apart a little bit, so it's going to give you an extra like half an inch because of the pins. But if you pin this together, you could try it on your neck. Make sure it fits around your neck comfortably where you want it. If you want it longer, add on that second skein. It's no big deal. And then I'm going to have, because I have another skein, I thought I was going to use two of these. But then I was like, hey, one skein is enough for her. Like, it works. So you see how I did the first of the row? And then you can do it at each peak to make sure it stays together. But I'm just doing like the valley of the last row and the peak of that row. And then we're going to skip here and then I'm going to do over here. Because I don't think I need more than four pins to keep this lined up. And you can keep these pins in while you're sewing it so that you make sure that it doesn't shift. Because it will make a big difference if it shifts. So put in as many stitch marker things or as many safety pins as you think that you're going to need to hold it together. Because my biggest problem when I'm seaming up something like this is when I get to the end, maybe one will be longer than the other because it shifted somehow. So that's what I did is I, I pinned it four across. And then you can just drape this over your neck and make sure that it fits the way you want. Now, this is the final step of our beautiful little chevron cowl i got my favorite darning needle jaden stitches turned me on to these darning needles or this style because this is soft so you could fit big bulky yarns in here and it'll still fit through like skinny holes so this is a very i really like these these are available on amazon yeah so now we're going to take and we're going to fold it and this is why i want you to pin this because i'm going to fold it together like this and these can very well shift, especially because you're going to have more stitches here than you do here because this is decreased and this is increased. So the, the stitches are not, your, your stitch count is going to be, you're going to have to like make sure that maybe you're going in some of the holes twice, but especially here. There should be four stitches, but we decrease, so there's only two, but there'll be four here. So we need to make sure that we do this stitch into this hole and then this stitch into that hole, the same hole. So just keep that in mind. And if you get confused, like just make sure you make sure, make sure the pins stay and the pins will guide you. The pins will guide you. This is just, this is all I'm doing. I'm going through this hole. Move that out of the way. We're going to go into the next. This is not, this is not rocket science. There's no art to this. We're just gonna do a quick little stitch. Make sure we don't accidentally stitch our stitch marker in there. And we're just gonna keep on just pulling from stitch to stitch, go to the next stitch, set of stitches, and just seam it together. And then when it's all seamed together, it will kind of lay flat. I bumped you. I'm sorry. Let me move my hand up a little bit so, or the camera up a little bit so I don't hit you guys again. And then, of course, I'm going to have to come through and weave in my one little end, but. So, as per always. When you guys make my patterns, I want to see, and I challenge you, if you live in colder climates, to make a bulky one, but I also challenge the people in the warmer climates to make like a lightweight one. I want to see this made in all weights. I think it will be beautiful, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. But show me, show me, show me. You can tag me on Instagram. You can send me pictures to my email. You can post in the Facebook group. Just, I want to see. I want to see the colors you pick. I want to see the yarns that you picked. I love seeing what you guys are making. I especially love seeing you guys make my designs. Not that this is like a 
fancy or like, you know, <laughs> extraordinary design. It's just a simple cowl, but I still really like seeing what you guys are doing. You can also make a matching hat if you if you did buy a second skein of yarn and you make this bigger like I did with my original and you have a little bit of yarn left over like I have yarn left over from the scarfy. Make a hat to match it. I want to see that too. That would be awesome. Or if you're in a hot climate, make yourself a nice little headband or something. You know, a scarf, a head scarf. <laughs> see how those um, stitch markers are making sure that it keeps those those areas lined up so it's not shifting. I was debating on what I want to name this cowl. And um, <clears throat> yes, I absolutely could call it the Chevron cowl. I absolutely could. That seems kind of simplistic to me, though. And even though this is a simple pattern, I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, I have the Dina shawl. I named that after another podcaster. So why not name the cowl after a podcaster? So I am naming this the Ashley cowl. And I am naming it after Ashley from Stitch and Ain't Easy because I absolutely adore her. I think she's the sweetest thing in the world. So this is the Ashley cowl. I've been really thinking about it as I crochet. I was working on it and I was like, you know, cause, and I was watching Ashley while I was stitching this up. She did a uh, um, crochet and tell, like a kiss and tell. So she had all of her friends, subscribers, podcasters making stuff and she was showing it off and she moderated it. Well, she moderated it. She voiced over the video and I felt like I was watching like, you know, back in the day, I don't know if they still do this because I don't watch morning TV, but back in the day they would have like fashion shows and they would like have the, the, the hosts of the morning show, like voice over as the, the ladies would come out and it totally, Ashley's voice totally reminded me of a fashion show from like a morning show or, you know, like a, a local fashion show. I'm just removing the stitch markers now so I can lay it out and see what it looks like. Make sure, and of course, of course, I crocheted in my stitch marker. <laughs> I locked it in. But I was watching her and it just came to me. I was like, I'm going to name this cowl after her. Because I know her and I know that this would, that would mean a lot to her. Because she's awesome and fantastic and gracious. Now see, that is laid flat. This is the outer side where we just stitched. And you cannot see where these stitches are. It just blends into the cowl. It's perfectly blend. You can't feel where the stitches are. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to weave this in. And how you decide to weave this in is up to you. It does not matter. I just usually go in the stitches. I jam it in there somehow. And I go back and forth a couple of times. I don't really overthink it. I've never had the tails come out. That's never been a problem. Just make sure you don't pull that too tight because it'll it'll dent in and then you'll have an issue and it'll look funky. So, the Ashley cowl. So, hey Ashley if you're watching. What's up girl? <laughs> you got your own cowl now. Now you have to make one. You're obligated. And then, I don't think I brought my scissors over here. We'll just tuck it in and we'll pretend it's not there. And then I'm going to come in and weave this side in. I really enjoy the puzzle yarn and there's a bunch of new colors out. Well, not a bunch. There's like five new colors out of the puzzle yarn. So, you know, if you wanted to buy some puzzle for yourself, there are beautiful new colors. I actually really like some of the old colors too. It's funny because I switched off of making my knit blanket that I'm working on and I switched over to crochet. So I'm knitting and crocheting with puzzle yarn all at the same time. 
Now I have to go back to knitting it. And I'm really, really enjoying it. Like, it's good yarn. It is enjoyable to work with. One more time. And it should be locked in there forever. And I was, I was showing my sister because, you know, she's home now. She's taking care of the baby. And, um... I was talking to her while she was feeding the baby and I was showing her this. I was like, these are your colors, babe. This is probably going to end up at your house. And then when I finished the first skein, I was like, all right, well, this is going to her house so I can make it smaller because she's much smaller framed than I am. She's much skinnier than I am. Isn't that beautiful though? And these are her colors. And I do have two more skeins of this, so I might make her a matching hat or ear warmer to go with it. I'm not sure. But yeah, let's flip this around so you can see what it looks like don't mind the appearance <laughs> i did not dress up for this tutorial um, but i just wanted to show you how the big yellow one which will take two skeins of the puzzle yarn fits me it's much lower on my body um fits me and you can you can wear it over your head like this and you can tuck it in your jacket like that it'll keep you nice and warm you can just wear it as decoration on your neck any old way you want to fold it. So that's how that one fits. But this one with only one skein of yarn fits pretty good too. I think this is a very good, and it kind of matches my shirt. This is how it fits me. It's right to there. So I think this was going to be perfect for her. Because like I said, she's much smaller frame. and she's still wearing up over her head. She's still, that is so pretty. That is so pretty. She can tuck it in and zip up her coat around it. And it'll keep her nice and toasty because it is very frigid up there. Although, let's be real, it's just as cold here as it has been up there. I think she's going to love this. What do you guys think? You can fold it down and around so that you get more of a, like a bulk like that lots of ways you could wear this just play with it just play with it if you make it longer more of this length um smaller people could probably like wrap it around their head and then turn it and wrap it over their neck so you can absolutely make this as long or short as you want and if you don't want a cowl you can make this into a um a, just a scarf you can make a big oversized scarf and just keep going and make it long you can do whatever you want or if you're really small framed <laughs> You can wear it as a tube top. <laughs> so, or you can make it big enough to be a tube top. I I don't care. You can make it a tube top. You wrap it over one shoulder and drape it around your, your chest. You can do whatever you want. Just play with it. Just have fun with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial for the Ashley Cowl. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. I think it's beautiful. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.